So this time, I, it's my pleasure to introduce our, our next speaker. Um, this is somebody uh, I've actually known for quite some time. He, he started off in this space reading my blog. And uh, that was where um, Ron, and I used to, Ron, Ron and I conversed several times uh, couple, over the last couple of years. And then in, in January of this year, he, he was instrumental in, um, in basically coming in and um, basically injecting, uh, inject, injecting new life into Prosper. And since then, you know, I've been following this space for three and a half years really closely. And what, what um, Ron and the team have done at Prosper has been nothing short of amazing. They, the, the, the company was, was, on a, was on a downward tilt. And since he came, since he came on board, they have, um, they have executed extremely well. The volume is, is way up, and I continue to be impressed. He's done that again and again and again, and it's been very impressive as an industry watcher to see the new management team um, at Prosper execute and really turn into a very strong number two player in this industry. So over to you, Ron Suber. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. So I'd like to do something a little different today. I'd love to have a very much open and interactive conversation about peer-to-peer -peer finance. And when I talk today, I'm talking about the industry and not about Prosper, but about really both companies. Because in this country, there are two peer-to-peer -peer platforms in the consumer credit business, Prosper.com and our friends and cousins at Lending Club. So let me just break the room in half very quickly. I saw half the hands go up about people that know what peer-to-peer -peer finance is. So on this side, we'll call this the lender group. And on this side, we'll call this the borrower group. And on this side in peer-to-peer -peer finance, there are two types of lenders. There is the retail group and the institutional group. And you will never see a peer-to-peer -peer platform with only retail. It doesn't work. And on this side are the borrowers. And there's three types of borrowers. There's the debt consolidation group. Those are people with credit, credit card debt, bank debt, debt with somebody, where they're paying too much interest. That's two-thirds of the peer-to-peer -peer business, is people looking to consolidate debt. They had a credit card, they went through their teaser period, their teaser rate, they didn't spend enough, they spent too much, they paid late. Something happened that they went from 9% to 19 or more. The other group, or one of the other two groups, are the people that want to buy something. Home improvement, solar panels, elective surgery, <coughs> vacation, tax payments. You get the idea, they want to purchase something, and they don't want to go to a bank. And the last group are small businesses who want to borrow on their personal credit. And so in four days, we're able to meet a borrower, get the information we need from them, validate and verify their identity, income, and employment, find the combination of retail lenders and institutional lenders, and exchange the money. So this group now becomes a bank, essentially. They're accruing interest daily. They're watching their assets go up. They're getting paid monthly, and this group is paying less interest. So we had lunch at the New York Fed two weeks ago, and they really think we're doing a good thing for our country in having income and interest for this group and less interest for this group and keeping unemployment low. So that's peer-to-peer -peer finance in a nutshell. This industry is changing so fast. At Peter and Dara's event just six months ago, I laid out the 12 things I thought that were going to happen in one year. Three have already happened, three are on the way, and six are in progress but not nearly done. So to show the speed of the graph of the origination increase, the industry is really changing as well. So if we just look at the check, the peer-to-peer -peer platforms were adding more borrowers with lower credit because the lenders have said they would like to take the risk and the reward. The second thing that we're doing is there's new forms of data, number four, and analysis that's really making it so much easier. So when a borrower comes to us, we not only get them to upload and scan very easily their information, but we can go into their bank account. If you say you're getting married, I can go on social media and actually see if he's getting married. So there's so many new ways that we have to determine pricing, risk, and credit and help the borrowers meet the lenders quickly and easily. And the other thing that's happened is loan securitization. So there are two in the peer-to-peer -peer industry and one in the student loan industry. The two in the peer-to-peer -peer industry are not rated. The one in the student loan industry is rated. 
So here we're going to see an explosion in the securitization. And that just means institutional lenders are buying loans. They're leveraging them at the bank. They're raiding either self or somebody else. And they're cutting them up into pieces and selling them to insurance companies or other groups that couldn't or didn't want to do the work to buy them themselves. So this is how fast it's really changing. So let's take two minutes and talk about what's really happening today. And these two pages really do encompass what's happening in the peer-to-peer -peer or debt crowdfunding or online direct lending business, all the same thing. So the securitizations have happened. We welcome competition. We think there should be more platforms. Like a lot of things in life, like yoga and marriage, peer-to-peer -peer finance is a lot more difficult than it looks. These two groups, <laughs> and I'm married 23 years, by the way. So these two groups are coming. They're trying to be in this business. We're trying to support them as an industry and as a new asset class. New platforms around the world are emerging, literally Germany, Canada, China, Brazil, throughout Asia. It's really taking off. There are so many underbanked or poorly banked people around the world. This is not just a North America phenomenon. And what we're seeing is like in Apple, in the Apple Store, there's an ecosystem. There are other companies building connections to Lending Club and Prosper, creating this whole new, call it, service providers or ecosystem, like Orchard and NoteX and Auto and, these, and Lend Robot, where you can literally, as a lender, use these service providers to better understand the data and make your loan purchases. So we are growing up as an industry as the ecosystem develops around us. And we predicted and we think there's going to be more of this next one, which is really a consolidation. We're not sure if it's going to be the social networks or the banks or other venture capitalists, but there is going to be consolidation. And we saw two, one here in the U.S. and one in London, already be consolidated. And the growth is dramatic. The lenders are there and the borrowers are there. So you can see the numbers. We wish the best for Lending Club. We're not sure what's going to happen to any of us but they've really made it easier for all of us in crowdfunding, whether you're equity or debt. They've really blazed the path, and we owe a lot to them for setting the standard. And for people like Dara and Peter and Orchard and Simon and the national press for really getting the word out. It has ignited the growth. The risk-free rate of return. Everybody said, what happens when Fed funds goes up or the corporate bond rate goes up or the 30-year treasury rate goes up? The yield on consumer credit is still there. Our platform average, if you bought a little bit of every single loan, is still 8%. So it compares so favorably to the risk-free rate of return that's out there. And as interest rates go up, if credit card rates go up, ours might too. Time will tell. A phenomenon has happened in the peer-to-peer -peer finance world. It used to be active loan pickers who thought they were smarter and better than Lending Club, and they were active and they were successful. A whole new group of lenders have come, both retail and institutional, passive. They literally just want to buy a little bit of everything or all of the Bs or all of the Cs and just index the platform. So that is a huge trend, like in the mutual fund stock business, active versus passive. Almost all new institutional lenders are coming in passively telling us how many dollars, what yield, what letters, as much as they can get for the month. And we're now seeing the banks. The banks are in this business. The banks are buying our double A loans because they have too much cash. The banks are sending us borrowers. The credit unions and community banks don't want to do loans under the B, so double A, A, B. They may send us the C on down. We are really working very closely with the banks. And many of our institutional lenders on this side are buying up loans pick a number, 20 million, going to the bank and borrowing 40 or 60 so they get enhanced yield. So we're very much working with the banks, even though some don't want their employees to do Lending Clever Prosper. <laughs> so we, since June, have added BlackRock as an investor and a client, and Google and DST have been new equity partners of Lending Club. So we have even improved not only the capital, but the client list. The media frenzy, there isn't a day that you don't see something about peer-to-peer -peer finance, equity crowdfunding, lending club or prosper, and that's on purpose. We've been speaking to all of the 
media, bloggers, to really ignite awareness and education and understanding. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. And efficiency. So if we were 10 days to fund a loan in January, so when a borrower came, they got their money 10 days later, we're now four, and we're going to three. If we can get to one, so quality and efficiency, you might see at the Apple store, when you want to buy something, check, credit card, point of sale, would you like to borrow? So this whole concept of where peer-to-peer -peer is going is changing. What we know today will be very, very different in a year and at the Lend at San Francisco conference for sure. So the borrower and lender experience has really improved on both sides. For the lenders, there's much more volume, right? Tons more volume. We stopped the high-frequency traders. We said to those that were trying to melt our servers and send in 100 messages a second, stop. So each of us have a governor that those institutional lenders can't beat the retail or beat everybody else. We've eliminated the speed game or the high-frequency trading game. We've increased the number of data, both on the website and the API. We've made better access to data, better tools. And we've improved performance because we're better at servicing with Larry's help. We're better at collections with some other group's help. And our risk and understanding of what's happening with the credit and the economy is so much better. And we've hired people from FICO and Moody's and the credit card and the bank companies. But it's really the borrowers that have the benefit of this efficient, growing, institutionalized asset class. The days to fund, four, going to three, hopefully to one from 10, the rates have come down a lot. So if you go back and look at your Lending Club or Prosper account a year ago or two years ago and look at what an A, B, or C yields and compare it to today, you'll see this has really benefited the borrower. And increased efficiencies. We have now given tools to people in the middle of the country and now we have these easy to use document upload systems. So what we're really doing is trying to become quality and institutional and efficient. At the Lendit Conference, at the closing keynote, I said one thing that became the most quoted piece of the closing keynote. And that was that our competition wasn't in the building and our competition wasn't in the room. That our competition really was not each other, not the debt crowd funders versus the equity crowd funders or Lending Club versus Prosper or any of the panelists you saw here. That's not the competition. Their competition really is education, understanding, and awareness. That is really what we're up against, and that's why we're all working together. You saw lots of us talking, even though we're trying to kill each other during the day on the playing field, <laughs> trying to really communicate, and how are we going to bring this industry best practices, growth, and really working with the regulators, understanding what does the FDIC want, what does the SEC want, what does the CFPB, Consumer Fraud Protection Bureau, looking for from us to help. When we met with the New York Fed, they thought we were doing a good thing because we were not only decreasing the cost of credit, but we were really lubricating the financial system and helping small business and providing credit to where there was no credit or lower rates on credit that was paying too high. So I also said at the Lendit conference that I thought we were at the top of the second inning. And something that I learned is that today is the top of the first inning. That everything we've done, equity crowdfunding and debt crowdfunding, was just the preseason. It was just practice. And it was important, but the game begins today. So I would just encourage everybody here, the banks, the equity crowdfunders, the debt crowdfunders, to really communicate best practices, efficiency, and quality. Thank you very much. <laughs>